Cool. How's everybody doing? I was supposed to have audio, just to let you guys know. It was really cool on the 8 o'clock. They really enjoyed it just as much as you guys did, trust me. Man, I am so, so excited to be with you guys. Just give me one second. All right. All right, seriously, how's everybody doing? I mean, like, I'm pumped now. I just had a full cup of coffee, feeling good, teenager kind of thing. Yeah, awesome. My name is Joshua Kodosky. I am the youth worship leader here at Comprez. I also play lead guitar on Sundays during the 9.30 and 11.11 sometimes. Um, and I'm just thrilled to be able to bring uh, the word to you guys today. Just a little background about myself. I practically grew up in this church before this was even a building. I was baptized in the movie theater. If anyone has been there since then, it's not a joke. That's where we started church. Um, and I've been here since then. We've been off and on. We've moved around some. Did inner city ministry for about three years in the heart of Orlando uh, during my middle school career. Then we moved back here my freshman year and immediately was handed a guitar and I started playing worship at the youth group um, Barely really knowing why, but then my passion for worship and for Jesus just grew. Now since freshman year, like I said, to a graduating senior, to be going to Sydney, Australia for Hillsong College in 2019 to be a worship pastor uh, for four and a half years. I'll be studying there and then going on. Thank you. Thank you. Man. So uh, does anyone have a Bible? Is that a, is that a thing we do? Anyone? Notes? All right, well, either way, if you have a Bible or if you want to look up on the screen, we're going to go out of Exodus 24, and it's going to start in verse 15. And it says, When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on the mount. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of this mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud, and as he went up on, he stayed there on the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights. Friends, this morning I'm going to be preaching a message to you about the cloud of God. This is something that has been dwelling on my heart. I get to meet with pastor on a weekly basis and just get to talk about life. And so last time I came in, he talked about Exodus 24 because him and Bill were just studying Exodus. And I immediately clicked with it. Because what was so cool about the story, it says this, right? So the whole point of the story has already happened. Moses already led the Israelites out of Egypt. We've already seen that in Exodus. That's a little before that. He's already split. God already split the seas. They've already walked through. They've already had some stuff happen. Now they're at the mountain, right? And this is a really big, big point in this uh, gospel of Exodus. See, when Moses responded to, G to God calling him to the mountain, he faithfully stepped into the unknown, into the cloud, you see. But here's where it gets a little crazy. The Israelites had a completely different story to this. See, we look back to chapters 19 and 20, and we see the chosen people, instead of responding to God, calling to them from the cloud, we see them stop at the foot of the mountain. See, Moses had already been up on the mountain to speak with God, so God said, Moses, bring my people to me. So Moses went back down to the camp. I don't know where they were staying. Maybe they had, like, some nice cabanas. Anyone gone to Cabana Bay? That place is cool. Um, went down got the people, brought them out. And so what was so cool about this point is like, Moses like, hey man, tomorrow morning we're going to go s speak with God. And they're like, oh cool, you know, that's, I, I think we can do that, I guess so. And the next morning they wake up and a massive storm hits. Well, like this thing is like, this is like Hurricane 5. Like this is Florida underwater, right? It's bad. And the Israelites said that they trembled. They trembled in fear and they stood. And so when Moses led them out of the camp to the mountain, when Moses stepped onto the mountain, the Israelites stood at the foot. And it's a crazy turning point because it's like, well, is this not the God that literally just brought you out of Egypt from slavery, part of the Red Sea for you, and walked through faithfully? See, they even told Moses in verse 20, sorry, chapter 20, verse 19, that they wanted Moses to intercede for them, that they didn't want to hear the voice of God. They wanted Moses to take over for them. I have a question. Have you ever assigned someone to intercede for you, for your belief? For your belief that God's going to do something in your life? And what I mean by that, have you ever had someone that sits next to you in church, right? I remember when I was in sixth grade, I used to do this because I didn't understand as well. Have you ever had someone just look and be like, hey, this, this is really cool. I, I'm really enjoying this. But do you mind if you pray to God for me? I, you know, me and God aren't on a good connection right now. I have hearing aids. I don't know. I just, I can't, can't connect with God right now. Have you ever done that? Have you ever tried to be like, hey, dude, I see that you're trying to talk to me, but I'm going to have my friend Joseph over here go ahead and do that for me because, you know, he's on a spiritual high right now. He's faithfully moving forward. See, the whole point of this is that we're seeing God's people tremble before the storm that was ahead on them 
towards the mountain, they stopped and missed an opportunity to meet God and know him personally. See, already the Israelites didn't know God personally because they weren't accepting what God was doing for them in their lives. See, the cloud ahead represented the unknown. I love that word, the unknown. Does anyone get uncomfortable when they hear unknown? Like when, like, it kind of makes you a little, like, kind of like makes your stomach drop when you go to the doctor and be like, hey, right now it's unknown what's going to happen. That makes, it makes my stomach drop. It makes me feel really uncomfortable and like, oh, man, this can't be good. But in this representation of the unknown, we're talking about God. See, we know and we believe in him and we know this, but when we faithfully step into the unknown, we're taking a step with Jesus that he's going to do something big in our lives, that he's going to do something miraculous in our lives, that he's going to take us to another whole level. Did anyone play Mario when they were, like, kids? I know that we got some, maybe. You know how hard it was to, like, beat all those levels? Picture that immediately going away and all you had to do was say Jesus. And you immediately had this personal connection with him. See, friends, we are the Israelites in this story. See, God is calling us into the cloud to meet with him. But we let our storms tell us things like we're not good enough. He'll see my sins, I'll be judged. And go back on, I'm not good enough. I got the, like I said, I was talking with the pastor. And he looked at me and said, you're right, you're not good enough. But the coolest thing happened is that Jesus went to the cross to die for us. And immediately made us good enough. Immediately made, made us have a purpose and a purposeful life in Jesus so that we could live and prosper in his love. See, he's going to ask us to step out in faith. And here's even a crazier one. He'll gonna, he's going to ask the admissions, right? I went to Haiti, absolutely loved it. But my first time going to Haiti, I was nervous. I was scared. He'll ask you to go to Africa, Haiti. And the craziest part, he'll ask you to go just down the street on 192, which we sometimes try to avoid. Because we don't want to see that one guy on the, on the side of the street. He's asking for some change. You know, sometimes in our mind, we judge that person. We say, man, he's going to go do alcohol, or not do alcohol, drink alcohol. Maybe he's going to go buy some pot. Whatever he's going to do, right? He's going to do something wrong because I know better than him. Immediately, you put yourself in God. You immediately put yourself in the shoes that you are better than everyone else. See, sometimes we don't like to leave the convenience of our comfortable routine. I say convenience because it's easy for us. We don't want to step out in faith because we're like, dude, this self is chilling. I don't know why you want me to get up and go talk to someone that is hurting. I don't know what to say. Maybe it's your testimony. I, when I was a kid and I had this testimony happen to me, the craziest thing that's happened to me, and I just talked to someone about it, and somehow it changed them, and I don't know why, but it changed them. See, crazy as this sounds, Moses hesitated in the story. We look back a little before Exodus, and we know the story of Moses is that he was actually in Egypt. The, the Egyptians liked Moses, and he killed one of the Egyptians, and he fled. He was feared for his life, so he ran away. He literally, man, that man forced gumped out of there real fast. <laughs> she didn't like that one. <laughs> and so he hid, but what happened was is he came across this burning bush. Do we know the story of this? Do you guys know the story of the burning bush? I don't know about you, but I think I would freak out if I saw a burning bush talking to me. Just like full flames, like, what's up? And you're like, dude, what? <laughs> craziness. But God was trying to tell Moses that you have been chosen by me to do the greatest deed in your life. Lead my people. Take them out of slavery. Show them. Tell the Egyptians what is coming, the plagues that are coming towards them. Warn them. But the Egyptians did not listen. And for seven times, these plagues came and just dawned on the Egyptians. And so finally, Moses took the Israelites and faithfully took them out. Yet the Israelites still trembled in the storm. What storm are you going through this morning? What storm is holding you down? See, God pursued Moses with an utterance of just full on after. And he didn't give up, just like he won't give up on you and me. He loved you no matter what, and he would come for you no matter where you are. See, the coolest thing about God is he, he's already been there. No matter where you think you are right now, he's been there. No matter what heart you've been broken in, he's been there. No matter what family member has been lost, he's been there for you. And he's taken that person home for you. See, God has loved you so much that the world has literally tried to captivate you and push you down because of how great God's love for you is. It tries to blind your eyes to see what God is going to do in your life. See, in the face of a great storm, things like this will push us down. 
it brings me back to my testimony. In fifth grade, I was a crazy little kid. My mom can testify. And I absolutely loved the military. But more importantly, I loved the history of the military. So I was in love with World War II. That was just something that was like on my heart. I don't know if I wanted to be in the military at that time. I don't really know. But I loved World War II. And the, the coolest thing about World War II for me was the way that they slept at night. I know that's weird. They dug foxholes and would stay there so that when bullets would fly, it would just right, go right, right past them. And they would sleep and get ready for the next morning. Well, went to the beach in like a normal weekend. Me and my mom usually went to the beach. It was like our little mom and uh, son beach trip. And so I got there, and she definitely helped me dig this hole because this thing was deep. It was like maybe up to here. And so then we're like, hey, let's, I want to build another hole. And she's like, all right, well, you got to do it yourself. And so I did it. I dug the other hole, and then she eventually came and helped me because I couldn't do it. And it was a, maybe a smaller one, but I decided the tunnel between and I am definitely not good with science or understanding of that. And so I went in to that tunnel, and it was a good chunk of sand. And I, instead of going to the other side, I stood there. I just stood there. Lay there. Sorry, I wasn't really standing. <clears throat> and I didn't know where the sand collapsed on top of me, and I was buried alive from head to my knees. I immediately freaked out. I started kicking. I started crying. I was like, I'm dying. This is it. I can't make it. There's no way I'm worthless. I've already been told that I feel worthless. There's, there's no way I'm going to get out of this. And out of nowhere, this cloud covered my life. And I felt this overwhelming sense of peace. And I heard scriptures like Romans 8, 28, which I got tatted on my arm because it's what saved my life. And I heard John 3, 16. I also heard affirmation of what I'm going to do in my life. And I didn't understand at the time, but as I look back now, I realized God had a plan and a purpose the entire time. And what felt like no time at all was eternity for my mom. She put down her magazine as she watched the sand cap, capsize on her son. She yelled out for help without hesitation. And a man came over and literally just dug straight down and found my head and pulled me up. And instead of freaking out and crying, I gasped for breath because I was buried alive. But I got out, and I smiled. I think it freaked my mom out, because she's like, why are you smiling? <laughs> but I smiled because I knew that there was something greater going on in my life. See, God's calling you to him today. Even right now, as you're sitting down, he maybe is trying to take that time to take the uncomfortable step of faith with him today. To the unknown, that favorite word, the unknown. See, it's human nature to distance ourselves from things that scare us. Like the Israelites, they tremble before the storm. Like us, we stand foot at the mountain of our storm. See, but our God knew this about us, and he sent his son Jesus to be our permanent friend residing with us every step of the way, 24-7. This brings me to a really cool story that pastor taught me, or told me. Why is it saying taught? But it goes like this. It was, a, it was an uncle, a Muslim uncle, and his niece and he literally buried his niece alive. So you can see the connection already. He buried his niece alive, and for seven days she was missing. They literally could not find this girl for seven days. And they found her, and she was miraculously alive. Buried alive, and she was alive at the seventh day. Some time later, she saw a picture of Jesus. And she pointed to it and said, that's the man that fed me when I was in the ground and kept me alive. See, what should have been a raging storm in her life was actually a beautiful son that was giving her light and peace the entire time. See, the stories are miraculous. And it's stories like this that make my heart get warm and happy, but more importantly, proud. Because I know that there's a God that would do anything to love on anyone, no matter what background or religion they have. See, I, I heard this story, and immediately as the pastor was telling me this, I, the first thing that popped into my head is God's trying to feed you right now. See, even through the unknown, even through the cloud, even through the storm, God's trying to feed you the word. He's trying to feed you the life. He's trying to fight, feed you something that's more important than you could ever know. See, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we see the exact nature of our God in Jesus. And this is where it gets really cool, right? God knew the fears that held his people captive, the storms that would blow us off course. And that's why he sent Jesus to be our intercessor. See, Jesus was the all-sufficient sacrifice. We know that we grew up in, I hope, I don't know if everyone did. I grew up in Bible school where Jesus was everything for us. Like, he literally died on the cross so I could wake up and eat my uh, toaster strudel in the morning. 
It's absolutely amazing. The God that literally did everything for me was right here interceding on my behalf to love me. It brings me back to an amazing story, right? It's when the, it is, uh, not the Israelites, the disciples are on the water, and they're in their boat, right? And Jesus isn't with them, but out of nowhere, this massive storm comes and starts sweeping them everywhere, and they're fearing for their life. They think they're going to die. See, immediately, just like we see in Exodus, in the face of the storm, they gave up. But just like God, Jesus was on the mountain watching them, and it says that he prayed for them and watched over them. See, we look back, just like God did with Moses in Exodus 19.4, 19.4, that he's reminding us to remember that what he has done for us, that he sent his son, the greatest display of love the world has ever known, so that the storm all around us would perish in the face of Jesus. That just absolutely amazed me. I've had ups and downs in my life. I've had turnarounds. I'm only 18 years old, but I feel in those 18 years, I've felt God heavily. I felt Jesus move into my life. I felt Jesus capsize my heart. Tell me that the truth of him is love. Tell me that the truth of my life is something better than I could ever imagine. Not for an instant would I think I would want to leave, go to Sydney, Australia, if I didn't have faith that my God was going to do something big. Because I could go just down the street 45 minutes away, go to just another college, do the exact same thing, but not have the faith that God's going to do something big in my life. Church, to sum this up, all I can say is no matter the storm in your life, no matter what fear or sin you're in, we have a God who will do anything for us. So the cloud of God's presence is in your life right now. Will you stand with me? Will you guys close your eyes with me and picture this? You're surrounded right now by a storm. But in the midst of that storm, you see a burning light, a consuming fire. You start to start pushing through. And out of nowhere, you step into the cloud of the unknown. But in that unknown, you find God. You find Jesus. You find what has done everything for you. You find the healer, the provider, the Messiah, Yahweh, Jesus. You find the man that has been calling you time and time again. Friends, it's time to say yes. It's time to kick down the storm in your life. There's no storm he won't tear down. So have no fear that he won't tear down your storm today. Will you sing this last song with us? day. The blessing comes from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord makes his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.